What's up, Slackers? I'm Ozzy, and welcome to 99Bits. This is a new show on Slack and Slash where we will challenge ourselves if we want to buy anything but a video game for under a dollar. Every episode, we're going to buy a game for under a dollar, sales count two, and we're going to tell you what they're really worth. The first game we'll feature on this show is Postal, which I purchased on Steam for 49 cents. Considering Postal was released in September 1997 in America, five months before the first Grand Theft Auto made its way to the US, Postal is iconic in the video game world because it's sort of the original poster child for extreme and often hilarious hyperviolence. Now, I loved Postal growing up. Let's not worry about how once upon a time I was a young child who enjoyed shooting ones and zeros at other ones and zeros. I still enjoy that today. The issues around the kind of video game violence present in Postal is something that can be debated about for hours, but that's not why we're here. Nowadays, people may claim Postal Falls just a little short. This game has staples of 90s design all over it. Weird level design, stupid enemy AI, Here's one for your mother! And God, the, ugh, the sound design! As soon as I boot the game, my eyes and ears hate me. The title screen is a straight assault on the senses. As the game begins, you're presented with... Plot. In a game like this? Yeah, okay, sure, why not? I guess it'll be good. Postal follows a man with schizophrenia who has been evicted from his home and believes the Air Force has released poison gas in his town that only he is unaffected by. So for some reason that means you need to go on a killing spree. You don't get that information from the beginning of the game though. Instead, cryptic messages in the beginning of each level about stuff like how the Earth is not only hungry but thirsty as fuck exist to show how insane the Postal dude really is, but they don't do much to help us understand why he's actually doing anything he's doing. The first level isn't inherently bad in its design, but again, just... just listen to this. Aurally, this game is a nightmare. That's Aural. A-U-R-A-L. What kind of channel do you think I'm trying to run here? From a gameplay perspective, the biggest issue present is there's little to no direction to explain how the game's mechanics actually work. What I mean is that learning to play Postal is all about trial and error. Can I burn down these trees? Oh, okay. Do these barrels blow up? Oh, okay, yeah, they do. Postal is a game you have to learn just by playing it, which is where both its difficulty and often frustrating experience will spawn from. All right, all right, so let's get back to the game. You click the button, you make bullets come out of your stick hand, and you progress through the level. So let me try some of these keys here on this keyboard. Um, right, you can, uh, you can move, you can shoot, Switch weapons and let's, uh... I regret nothing. Did I just kill myself? Man, no wonder this game was subject to criticism. Sure, this feature was added as a joke and the first time... Alright, I'll admit, the first handful of times it's pretty funny, but... Years later, I'm not really sure how I feel about this kind of thing being in a game. As you can see, Postal is very old school, and there's not much direction other than kill all the hostiles. And when that happens, look at this. Everyone on the board is dead. I did it. That's the objective that the game presented me with, so... What do I do now? I'm just running around. I actually had to look up a gameplay guide to tell me how to go to the next level. You wanna know how to do that? You just gotta hit F1. Why do I have to do it? I, I, I don't understand why a player has to engage the next level. It's not that hard to type out a block of code that takes me to the next level. A lot of games do that, where you complete the objective in... Uh, a few levels into the game, the isometric camera angle gets changed to a top-down one, and then flip-flops between the two after that with no real rhyme or reason. This makes it tough to teach yourself the mechanics. For example, while on an isometric level, you might be able to let the postal dude throw an object over a wall. At a top-down angle, the objects bounce off everything. On top of that, some of the stuff in Postal flat-out just doesn't make sense. For example, the enemies are sometimes a little better at killing each other than the postal dude is. Is everybody going Postal in this game, or is it just me? When you get right down to it, the various gameplay issues present in Postal aren't a deal breaker if you yourself can get past them. The game has its highs and lows, but I think most people would agree that most of what's bad about Postal goes out the window when you reach the parade level. Holy sh**, this is a game changer. This level is when every player should suddenly understand Postal at its best. The most ridiculous, over-the-top simulation of extreme hyperviolence. That being said, these cartoonish levels are few and far between, and the humor takes an unsettling turn on levels that ask you to shoot up places like an elementary school, a city after an earthquake, and a retirement community. The legacy that Postal left behind is that of a dark comedy, forever leaving fans to question how sane we really are for finding shit like this entertaining. So let's get to why we came here.
First up, of course, is Postal, at the low, low price of 50 cents. The perfect gift for that nostalgic edgelord in your life. Pros include its dark comedy, weapon variety, and the parade level. Cons include sound design, clunky controls, and moral qualms abound. And our second option is a gumball, at the low, low price of 50 cents. The perfect gift for the man that has it all, but still needs some gum. Pros include its great taste and the workout your jaw will undoubtedly receive. Cons include RNG, cavities, and short-lasting flavor. So Ozzy, tell the kids at home, what are you going to choose? This gum is soft, chewy, and delicious, but I pick Postal and I regret nothing.